October 22nd, 2005, 8.28 p.m. Since the takeoff, the plane was flying smoothly for eight minutes straight until this happened. Without any warning, the cockpit went completely dark and the sudden blackout instantly shut down all the instruments while the pilots didn't even get time to react. They were still able to the plane, but blindly, with no idea of its speed, altitude, or even the location. The radar signals couldn't locate the plane either. Passengers aboard were trapped in the dark cabin at 23,000 feet above the ground, and they had no idea that each moment the plane was simply fighting for its life. But what caused this nightmare blackout? Was it a human error, technical fault, or something else totally? This is the story of a mysterious and unfortunate tale of British Airways Flight 870. It was a cold evening in Heathrow, West London. Just after 8 p.m., Flight 870 ran through the runway with 82 people on board, 76 passengers and six flight crew. The destination, Budapest, Hungary, and the captain, seasoned with nearly 12,000 hours in the air, lifted the Airbus A319 smoothly into the night sky, and the London city lights faded behind them as the plane climbed toward foggy, low-hanging clouds over Budapest. Here, the autopilot kicked in taking control just as textbook move. Crossing the North Sea, the plane reached 23,000 feet, waiting for clearance to climb higher. But instead, what they got was a nightmare. Just eight minutes after the plane took off, everything went unexpectedly wrong. There was a loud banging noise in the cockpit, and then all the lights went out. The pilots even got no warning for that. They were shocked. The first officer quickly thought both engines had stopped working but the plane was still climbing higher. That means the engines were working. The captain grabbed the controls again with both hands, taking over the plane himself, because all the automatic systems had stopped working. And the reason, a huge electrical failure inside the aircraft. The good part is that the captain was trained for electrical problems in the flight simulator many times, but nothing had prepared him for the mess he now faced. The main screen that showed important flight information like speed, height, and the angle of the plane was completely gone. The screen that showed where the plane was and what was around it also stopped working. So he had no idea where the plane was or if there were other planes nearby. There were supposed to be backup instruments that worked without power during emergencies, but those were not lit up either. So the conclusion was this. The captain had to fly the plane by looking outside, even though it was night and very hard to see. Only one small screen was still working. It showed some technical details about the plane's systems, but it did not help with flying. The captain tried to call for help on the radio, but in panic, accidentally pressed the wrong button that also turned off the autopilot. But he fixed that mistake quickly and tried the radio again. And turns out the radios were dead too. Meanwhile, down on the ground, air traffic controllers watched in fear as Flight 870 disappeared from their radar screens. When they tried calling the plane, there was no reply either, because the plane's transponder and radios had stopped working. Even inside the cockpit, the pilots struggled to talk to each other. Their noise-canceling headsets needed power to work, and now they were useless. They had to shout to hear each other over the strong wind and engine noise. And amidst all these, they tried to figure out what had gone wrong and what they could do. Meanwhile, in the passenger cabin, the lights were off except for some dim emergency lights. Even the intercom system was not working. And for that, the cabin crew could not talk to the pilots. The last instruction that came from air traffic control was for the plane to climb to 23,000 feet. The captain remembered that the power went out when they were at 19,000 feet. That meant they still had 4,000 feet to climb to reach a safer height. In this situation, looking carefully through the darkness, the captain could just see the backup instruments. Even though they were not lit, they seemed to be working. Holding on to that hope, he kept flying the plane, only trusting his experience. At the same time, the first officer read the emergency checklist on the small working screen. She said each step out loud, and the captain confirmed each step before she tried to do it. Since there was no light, she had to feel for switches and buttons, depending on her memory. Naturally, every action was slow and careful. On top of that, turns out, the emergency checklist also had a serious problem. The step that restores the power was at the very end of the list. If it had been the first step, they might have fixed the problem quickly, without losing time. But the rules said they had to follow the steps in order, one by one. So time was running out, and chances of getting saved were getting slimmer. Amidst the panic and darkness, the first officer tried to reach out and finally pressed the alternate power button. 
The lights came back on, the screens rebooted. Relief spread through the cockpit, but the problem was not fully solved because they couldn't be assured of what had caused the power to go out. Could it happen again? The captain needed answers and he needed them fast. As the plane climbed to 23,000 feet, he leveled it off and turned the autopilot back on. But the auto thrust system was still not working. It's like driving a car without cruise control. And with a bit of breathing room, he handed control to the first officer and started checking what was wrong. This time, he contacted air traffic control using a pan-pan call that symbolizes that something serious had happened. On the other side, the controllers were relieved to finally hear from Flight 870 again. They told the captain to keep flying at the same height and direction. But the captain was worried because other systems like windscreen heating, cabin temperature control, and ventilation were also down. For this, the captain didn't want to take the risk of flying over the sea. So he asked to turn back toward London. Air traffic control told him to fly on a heading of 299 degrees. But to buy some time, the captain asked to fly in a holding pattern near Brazo, close to Clacton. A holding pattern is like a waiting circle in the sky, and it revealed that one transformer rectifier was not working. Captain thought this was the main cause of the problem, but he was wrong. The transformer rectifier had actually been damaged by another failure, which was much bigger than this. Generator 1 failure. This was the real cause of everything. But unaware of it, the captain called British Airways Maintenance Control for help. When the captain mentioned the ACESSFEED button, an important detail, the engineer on the ground did not understand due to a bad radio connection. Because of this, maintenance control also thought the only problem was the transformer rectifier. They said the plane could keep flying with it broken and they could easily continue to Budapest. But no matter what, the captain had the final say. And so he ran a quick check on what's working and what's not. Again, the windscreen and window heating on the captain's side were off. The A320's rules say flying without this heat is allowed only if there is no chance of ice forming. And on a night flight over Europe, ice could happen. Also, the weather in Budapest was getting worse. The visibility was low. They might have to use Autoland to land safely. But Autoland needs auto thrust, and that was also off. And so in case they could not land there, they would have to find another airport. Plus, if the power failed again, it could happen over the sea, over land, or during the final approach in fog. Considering everything, the captain thought returning to Heathrow was safer. But going back had its problems. The airline had approved the flight. Turning around would cause delays and cost a lot of money. EU rules say airlines have to pay compensation if flights are delayed more than three hours. So after 40 minutes in the holding pattern, the captain decided to continue to Budapest. He believed the broken transformer rectifier would not cause more problems. The first officer climbed to flight level 330. They turned off the auxiliary power unit to save fuel. The pilots watched their instruments closely and checked the weather at their destination. Meanwhile, the real problem, Generator 1, was still faulty and running. Anyway, fast forward to half past 10 at night. The plane is descending through freezing clouds. Outside, the temperature is around minus 50 degrees Celsius. The aircraft's skin and glass became ice cold. The captain's windscreen turns into a frozen barrier. The first officer still has a clear view of the runway but the captain is effectively blind. Normally, one pilot flies while the other watches closely, ready to step in. Now the captain must rely solely on instruments, trusting numbers and dials instead of his eyes. On top of that, the first officer has to manually control the engine thrust, a rare task for her outside the simulator. An automated voice counts down the altitude as the plane nears the ground. And five minutes before 11, after a breathtaking struggle, Flight 870 touches down safely. The first officer drives the plane off the runway. The captain quietly writes down what went wrong, still unable to see through his icy window. But remember, they didn't even know the real problem. Why did that Generator 1 fail in the first place? If you check aviation history, this was not the first time something like this had happened, and it was a deeper design flaw rather than an isolated failure. Engineers knew the main generator, Gen 1, which supplies the aircraft's electricity, the likely culprit behind Flight 870's power loss. However, despite extensive testing, they couldn't figure out the exact failure. As the problem remained unresolved, Airbus took a different approach, minimizing the risk. They added a dedicated backup power for cockpit floodlights, like an emergency flashlight that kicks in during a blackout, so pilots can still see their instruments. In newer models, old mechanical backups were replaced with a self-powered digital display that stays lit regardless of main power status. 
The most critical upgrade was done in the software. It now auto-switches to backup power if the main fails. No pilot action needed, which boosts safety even when the issue isn't fully understood. It was surely the pilot's caliber that night that passengers returned home safe. But why wasn't the checklist better written? Or if the captain gave in to pressure? Let, it let us know in the comments, and if this story made you think, like, share, and subscribe for more untold aviation mysteries.